Senator Hirono. Senator Sanders. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, my guess is that historians in years to come will look, look back at hearings like this and they will ask, what were they thinking about? What world were they living in? Didn't they see what was going on all around them? All over this planet today, we are seeing nations, including our own, ravaged by the impact of climate change. And meanwhile, while climate change is doing horrendous damage to peoples all over the world, we have hearings like this that talk about more oil exploration, more dependency on fossil fuel, when the evidence is overwhelming that this country should lead the world in transforming our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energies. And it is especially surprising that in a beautiful state like Alaska, which has been hit so hard by climate change that you are not leading the world, leading this country, in telling us the damage that has been done and the need to move away from fossil fuel. Right now, according to NASA, the first six months of 2017 are almost a full degree hotter than any year since records started being kept in 1880. This is unbelievable. The duration and strengths of hurricanes, and I just came back from Puerto Rico, have increased by 50%. 2017 is already one of the worst wildfire seasons on record. The Inter Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change tells us that the average global sea levels have already risen by about three millimeters annually since the early 1990s, and coastal cities all over our country and the world are in danger of being flooded. And here we are talking about more dependency on fossil fuels, more destruction of the planet. What world are we living in? What are you going to say to your children and your grandchildren? Meanwhile, there's a revolution taking place in sustainable energy. We're seeing the price of solar and wind plummeting. We're seeing massive corporate investments, not in oil, not in gas, by the way, but in sustainable energy. Solar sector today employs more people than Apple, Google, and Facebook combined. So I have just maybe a simple question. I do understand Mr. Sheehan, that your boss, the president, told us during the campaign that climate change was a hoax, right? It was a hoax. Briefly, uh, Mr. Sheehan, is climate change a hoax or is it real? Uh, no, Senator Sanders. Uh, certainly, I believe that climate change is real. I believe we can see it from areas from Alaska to many other areas. Uh, but what I do believe is that uh, as we look at these alternative forms of energy, uh, that are coming online, and you, you don't have to look far around the, this country to see new wind energy and solar uh, operations popping up all over the place, but they still represent a very small part of the energy That's in this right. country. That's right, but uh, my question to you is why is not the Trump administration recognizing that reality, investing heavily in trying to move us in that direction rather than encouraging more oil uh, and gas exploration? Uh, I think they are encouraging those other energy sources, but I think that they're also trying to be forward-looking. You think to say, what do we need 10 years from now? You for think oil that the Trump country? administration is encouraging, is investing, is urging us forward in wind and solar? Is that what you're saying for the record? I haven't seen a, a, a backstepping in those particular sorts of energy mechanisms. Really? So. Well, and I think you should examine what your administration is doing. It, it would... Uh, let me ask the Lieutenant Governor uh, very briefly that at a time when your state, perhaps, and it's a beautiful state, my God, it is the last natural wilderness that we have, don't you think that Alaska should be leading our country in terms of transforming our energy system away from the products that have caused the problems that are impacting your state? Absolutely. We feel it every single day. We know it. We have invested in alternative energy. We need to continue to do so. Uh, there were references to, to uh, 
uh, wind power. Uh, if you look at uh, at, at uh, wind power and other alternative forms of of energy, we are making those investments. We need to make more, but we also know that we cannot flip a switch, and that's not a pun, and turn off our reliance. But we will never flip that switch so long as we continue investing in, in, in oil and gas. Let me ask, last question, Madam Chair, if I may. Sure. Let me ask Mr. Alexander. Senator Sanders, you are out of time. We do have one more, and we do yeah. have votes coming up at, Let at, just finish. at we, noon. We went three minutes over on two of our colleagues over here. Let him just if ask it's the a question. Quick question. Quick question. Quick question. I just want Mr. Alexander to summarize briefly the impact that this drilling will have on his people's way of life. Senator Sanders, we believe that drilling in Izik, Gotsan, Gondai Godlid, will devastate us as a people. That will absolutely devastate us as a people because you're talking about 80% of the diet of the Guchin people being Vatzai, that porcupine caribou herd. And so our connection to that is so strong that you're talking about just an absolute change in the way we live as people. And, you know, what about the next generation? Will they ever even have the opportunity to learn how to hunt caribou and to respect it? I don't know. And I'm hoping that you here today will protect that. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Sanders. Senator Manchin. Uh, Madam Chairman, thank I want to thank all of you uh, for being here. And, and uh, uh, you can see this is quite, uh, quite uh, divisive, if you will. But the bottom line is we live in a real world. We don't live in a fantasy world. And we can't pick what and choose um, what we would rather, rather have. Really, we're, we're uh, a country that depends on... Uh, almost 20 billion barrels of oil a day. That's the facts. Um, we imported oil from 70 countries last year. That's a fact. Uh, I come from a state of West Virginia, and it's a state that believes really in all in energy policy. They never hesitated once when this country needed the coal that made the steel, that built the guns and ships, and did everything for this country. You know, our people work and work hard. They will continue to. And I, uh, I, I, I thank Governor Walker. I thank you for being here and. And Governor Mallet, I want you to know you're not the only Democrat here that believes in all in energy policy and, and really respects and, uh, and supports ANWR uh, and doing it in a responsible way. I also know that um, I voted against the budget because I thought the budget was just a gimmick to get to a budget reconciliation, which took all of us out of the process. Democrats cannot participate, have not participated in the budget process right now for overall tax reform, which the country needs. Uh, but with that being said, I also realize that, you know, uh, we're going to, uh, there's going to be more fossil used in the world than ever before. Uh, all we can do is find different technologies and different uh, abilities to use it until we find a technology or a new industry that will provide a more cleaner uh, energy, if it's going to be a fusion or, or some other form in the near future. But right now, uh, the world is using more coal, we're using more oil. And I look at the dependency that we have, uh, and when you start looking at uh, the security of our nation, the more that we are less dependent on foreign oil, the better we are strategically and the stronger we are as a nation. Uh, also, I noticed that uh, the um, Point Thomas, Thompson, I'm sorry, Point Thompson, uh, the last three years the coastal plain has already been exported and is in development. And I think that that's been done in an environmentally sound way, a balance between the environment and the economy up there. Uh, it's within the same ecosystem as 1002. Uh, I understand, uh, Mr. Alexander and everyone, depending on what side you're on, there's got to be a balance to be had here. I don't know why we can't find that balance, why it's always either one side or the other, why we're divided as a nation, why we're divided as a people. It always comes down to what side are you on? I've had people ask me, so what's your politics? I said, you ought to ask what my purpose of being in the, in the process, in the political process. You should care less whether we're Democrats or Republicans. I want a country that's strong. And a country can only be strong if we're energy independent. It's a fact of life. And if you want to set the technology standards the rest of the world should use, you better develop them right here. For the last eight years under the present administration, we never developed and basically spent anything in research trying to find better ways of using coal and oil, natural gas in a much cleaner way. Uh, but with that being said, people says, I want all renewables. I said, fine. Tell me what five hours of the day you want your energy. 
Tell me what five hours of the day you want your refrigerator or your heat or your air conditioner to work because that's really what you're going to get. And I think, Mr. Sheehan, you uh, related to that. But uh, if you could uh, uh, briefly, uh, uh, Mr. Mallett, uh, speak on do you believe there's a balance? I mean, are, you know, I, I don't think that you all would be representing the great state of Alaska thinking you're encroaching and changing the lives of your citizens there. Or have you just basically thrown caution to the wind? We need balance. First, let me say very quickly, I'm a Clinkett Indian. And when people ask me to be brief, I'm doing my damnedest. <laughs> uh, uh, <coughs> but I... Uh, uh, we need balance. We need to build a future in which renewable energy sustains our children. It is an absolute high priority that Alaska recognizes its responsibility for and will at every juncture possible take... Is Alaska developing clean energy with renewables the way you all... Uh, yes. The way you're extracting yes. basically the resources of... We uh, have a long Alaska. way to go. Okay. We have invested and continue to invest in alternative energy as a high priority. Mm -hmm. uh, and Mr. Alexander, do you, is there any way, is there a balance to be found here that we can preserve the way of life of, of, of your wonderful people, but also have energy independence if we can and use the resources that we have? Do you think that's possible? Thank you, Senator. Or have you made, have you made uh, overtures toward that, that you've tried to find the balance and it's been rejected? Senator, what I'd say is this, is why is the balance being put on the back of my people? Okay, I, I'm just saying. Have, have, and I'm, I'm answering your sure. question, Senator. Why is the balance being put on the back of my people? Because if you take a look at the North Slope, there is plenty of other places to drill, as has been mentioned earlier. Plenty of other places. So that's the balance. You have NPRA you can drill in. We don't need to drill in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Can I ask real quick then, as far as the lieutenant governor there, have you all looked at different areas to support, trying to find that balance, but protecting their rights? Absolutely. And with a pipeline, the reality being three-quarters empty, with all of the existing areas of exploration and development, and, and, and more coming on with recent discoveries, we still are a long way from being responsive to current national energy needs, and we need to continue to find the ability to achieve national security, uh, safety yeah. in energy, and we need the access to the 1002 coastal plain in order to achieve that. Let me just say that my time is up, and I thank you, Madam Chairman, but uh, those of us who come from extraction states have done the heavy lifting. West Virginia has been heavy lifting for a long, long time, and we continue. And our way of life also has been infringed upon also. We think we can do things better, but also find the balance. And all we're asking for is some tolerance here. We try to find alternatives that we can respect your people and your way of life, and also in a balance have the energy that we need to keep this country strong. I think that's a responsibility. There's nobody in West Virginia who wants to drink dirty water or breathe dirty air, the same as Alaska. So if anyone thinks from the public leaders and all of you are supporting doing more as far as an energy resource, energy production, in the most scientific way or the most uh, advanced way as you possibly can. I know the footprints as far as horizontal drilling. We've reduced the footprint in West Virginia. We've been blessed with a lot of of uh, uh, shell, gas, and, and it's unbelievable. We know we can do it much better, much cleaner, much more environmentally, environmentally friendly. So I'd urge all of you, man, try to find that, that pathway forward. Try to find that balance that you, I think you can, hope you can anyway. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Senator Manchin, thank you. And uh, I appreciate the focus on balance. That's what we try to, try to do around here. I, I, I spent a lot of time last night reading everyone's written testimony, and uh, I was struck by a comment that you had included, uh, Lieutenant Governor, um, in, in saying just these words, we have achieved this balance. It is time to permit the exploration and development. The state has demonstrated that wildlife and environmental protection can be achieved through 50 years of development and progress 
on the North Slope. And I, I think it's important to, to, to remember that what we are seeking to do in the 1002 is not something that has not been done in, in the North Slope. Uh, we have 40 years plus uh, of, a, of, a, of a track record up there, 40 years of, of ensuring that the caribou continue to move through, that the polar bear are protected, that the snow geese are protected, uh, that the mitigation that we talk about has, has been addressed. Um, at the same time, we have been leading not only the country but the world when it comes to our innovation and our pioneering uh, with, with microgrids. I talk about it a lot here in, in, in this committee. So uh, much to be proud of there from Alaska's perspective. And I know that each of you, uh, as you have provided testimony here today, have, have contributed to, uh, to this conversation in a very important and a substantive way. Uh, our votes have started. We have two of them. It would be my intention to thank this panel. Thank you for your time. Um, this is a long time to be sitting and fielding questions, so we appreciate that. We will uh, take at an at ease, and uh, it's my intention that we will resume the hearing at 1230 with the second panel. And so, again, thank you to each of you. Uh, the rest can all take a stretch break, and we will be back at 1230.